Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. Today is going to be a fun little project. And this is going to be a little unusual, but not totally unwarranted. We've got a small pile of parts here. Um, not the least of which is an Arduino Zhao. Ha, ah, I can't say my pronunciation of that's going to be correct, but it should be really fun. And, well, we're going to do something pretty cool, and we're building a little shower controller. Now, this is more of a proof of concept. This is going to be a little rough around the edges, but basically 3D printed a little mechanism here that allows me to clamp this over the handle of a standard shower and then use a GT2 timing belt <laughs> to grab that and turn the shower handle. Then, of course, with a waterproof temperature sensor, in this case, it uses the standard pipe thread in my country, and then you, you know, thermally bond your temperature sensor to it, and you can kind of encapsulate this and isolate your temperature sensor from the water, barely touching that in the flow to not totally screw it up. And then you have a microcontroller, which is able to control the temperature. And now, this opens a whole lot of interesting things to think about. For example, a shower is a shockingly complicated control challenge. Typically, you need a controller. Well, <laughs> I don't know why I said typically. You always should have a model of your plant or, or the system or the actuator, a combination of the actuator and the natural um, transfer function of the system. And then you need to design a controller that can adequately control that system or the plant. So you end up with this combination of the plant and the controller to build a control system. But a shower's weird because its natural transfer function, like let's consider the control input as turning the handle from all the way cold to all the way hot. And if you turn that from all the way cold to all the way hot and the water in the hot water pipe is cold, you're going to get a different response than if there's hot water right at the valve. There's some inherent delay that could cause instability in the control loop. So we have a, a hysteretic controller, we have a PI controller, and we have a P controller, and we're going to get the natural transfer function of this system, just unit step response from cold, and then from when it's preheated, we're going to plot those two. Then we're going to look at the uh, control output with a PI, a P, and the hysteretic controller. And then just for fun, I'll probably crank the gain of the PI controller too high so that it's unstable, and then we can see the oscillation in the system. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the plan. But also, all the while, while this is going on, this is a really fun piece of code. So absolutely check this out in the comments, because instead of just implementing this like we usually would, we implemented it using an RTOS, which is really fun. It's a real-time operating system that allows for logical multi-threaded in a single-threaded processor. And that's exactly what we did today. So we have the temperature sensor being pulled in a thread at a specific polling rate. But when it's not reading the temperature sensor, it can be talking to the screen. And when it's talking to the screen, uh, it'll be sending some I squared C commands. But when it's not doing that, it can do the motor driver logic and run the control loop. Then the way we prioritize these tasks, we say, if you need to talk to the motor, if you need to be doing motor driver tasks, ignore everything else. Motor driving is important because that's what gives us fluid motion and you know acceleration curves and that sort of thing. We want that to all happen correctly. So do the motor first. When you're not doing the motor, then do the temperature sensor. When you're not doing the temperature sensor, if you're not doing anything else, you may as well update the screen. So in that way, we have this tiered system where the control and the control loop is our highest priority in the micro. When it's not doing that, it can check the temperature sensor. And when it's not doing that, it can check the screen. So this is a really cool bit of code. That's really high level how an RTOS works. And man, everything we just said could be like four dedicated videos. So we're just gonna scratch the surface today on all of it, throw it together and have a ton of fun talking about control systems, our tosses. We're going to get some pretty graphs of the transfer functions, assuming that the data logging on the COM port works well. We're going to have like two 10 foot USB extension cables to get from here to the bathroom. So let's do exactly that. Yeah, you know, it's 
screws on nice and tight. Oh, it didn't break in two. I need to tension this belt, of course. Um, but there's hope. Let's see, I'm going to attempt to rotate the pulley. Hopefully, that'll turn on the shaft. That's all it is. So as long as we have enough torque in the motor. As long as we have enough torque in the motor, the belt shouldn't skip. This should be able to turn on the shower. Awesome stuff. I've got a pretty weird problem. <laughs> That is, the computer is in a totally different room, which means that we really can't do stuff in sync very well, which is why I had to run in here and loosen this belt, because the second I started the serial port logger, this motor started moving, and it was awful. We're going to capture the open loop step response for temperature. Please work. Please work. Open. Okay, I have 10 seconds to get in the other room. Run, 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 run. Okay, putting tension. Watching. Still recording. Okay. Okay. Made it about halfway. Okay, so it did go too far. Okay, it went way too far. Okay, I need to add that clip way more quickly. That went way too far, but I think we got it all the way on. Yes, we did. Okay, so we got it all the way on. I'm going to cut that rotation time down while I watch the data, and uh, we'll see what that says. Uh, just for your edification, I'm going to point you up at the screen so you can see what I could see if I were watching the screen but I'll be watching the data on the COM port in the other room. So we'll just keep this going and should be cool. So we're up to 47C. Cool, wow, is that already that hot? Holy crap, yeah, that is really hot. I guess I'll go check the data, see if we're at steady state, we're at 48C. Almost immediately. All right, so the hot water must have been near the shower already. So that was really a hot open loop step response. I'll do the cold one if I can, but quite frankly, the odds that I have free time to uh, let that thing rest for eight hours and then come back is almost none. So we have an open loop step, re step response. Preheat is a corner case. We won't worry too much about that. What I am going to worry about is I can now enable a controller. All right, it should be ready to go. Going to open the COM port. It opened, taking 10 second, ow, 10 second timer started. All right, pulled it tight. Okay. All right, so we have a problem where it was requesting more heat because it got too hot. Okay. Here we go. Oh my goodness, now it's too hot and I'm wet. Oh man. Okay. So now this is a perfect example of the problem of PI controllers for temperature. Oh man. I think I gotta stop it here. I'm getting tired from running back and forth. So, what did we just observe? We just observed wild oscillation because there's a huge delay from the temperature sensor changing, which is, you can hear the PI controller going nuts. <laughs> it does clip. So this is in the water stream, right? So the water needs to change temperature. There's a huge delay block. There's all kinds of fun control challenges here. And now we're not totally done here, but what we can see 
is that when we gave this micro control of the shower, there were some there was some instability that we just observed because it cranked the water all the way hot. It turned it all the way hot in a way that you know, we couldn't really trust. It was like more, 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 more. And then all of a sudden it got more than it needed. It has no knowledge of the system, right? We as humans know if you turn the water all the way hot, it's going to be too hot. The system does not know that. All it knows is I need more or I need less because that's all we programmed it for. Now, there's probably some set of PI coefficients and clipping values that could make this thing work, but this isn't really a great control system if you have to tune it for every single shower you ever install it in. And I know this is a solvable problem because I've seen it solved, but if we fix some things about the way this thing works, if we fix the fact that I need to run back and forth between two rooms to update the controller and log data correctly so I can share it with you, I think this will be a lot easier to work with. So I'm gonna fix some of those problems off camera and then we'll circle back and talk about this together. Okay, let's talk about what we just saw there. That was a really interesting, uh, an interesting nuance of control theory. So let's talk a little bit about what just happened and what we just observed. So that controller overshot, it turned the temperature up too high. And by the time it realized the temperature was too high, it was too late because you have to think about it, right? The way that this thing works is there's a mixing valve and that needs to get all the way to the head and then the temperature sensor and then all of these things have a delay. So normally I would be inclined to let that system oscillate for a while, but that was too much going on all at once because it actually overshot so far that it turned the water off. It turned the knob all the way back down to off. And by the time it had turned the water off, well, I knew that I was in trouble because that meant I need to like hold the knob and look at the camera and make sure we didn't, and then keep the thing from uh, skipping too many teeth and wearing out the belt because the whole thing's not dialed in. This thing is like a hairy, scary dev kit right now. And it's really, really not tuned for anything. I need to get a laptop in there right next to the control system to really be able to do this thing efficiently. So we will circle back if you're interested in that. If you are, let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, we might just park this one here because if we want to demonstrate control systems and overshoot and undershoot and P and PI, we can do that with a power supply on the bench and an oscilloscope. We don't need to spend all the time interfacing with water and honestly drenching myself. Hopefully you found this interesting and exciting and you want to learn more about our tosses, there are going to be so many links in the description of this video because we really barely touched all the topics that we used, but we crammed all these things together into a really cool concept that hopefully you enjoyed. A special thanks to all of our channel members who support us on Patreon or YouTube. I really appreciate the extra step you've taken of supporting us directly. Seriously, thank you. You make great projects like this one possible. As always, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching it, Eve, for everyone. Thank you for staying till the end. Bye.